Hello everyone, this is not the NCFL current year topic analysis on resolved human genetic engineering should be banned. This is more an analysis of NCFL topics to kind of investigate how we got here and what makes for a good or bad topic for NCFL nationals and why. The specific analysis on this year's topic will be forthcoming. So let's look at this in general. NCFLs picks their topic in a different way than NSDA does. NCFL topics are only picked once a year. They're picked from a list of four to six instead of just a list of two. They're picked in a runoff voting process. And instead of a split between mostly school vote and a little student vote, each diocese in the country gets one of its own votes. So that changes the process a little bit. It gives them more time to think of topics. The main function of the NCFL Nationals topic is to make the NSDA Public Forum Wording Committee look good. And they manage to do this year after year with very few exceptions. At the same time, it is not always their fault. Part of it is just a difference in the event's format and a much lower tolerance for imbalanced topic at this tournament than many others. Let's look at why that is. So, first off, generally speaking, I would say that narrow topics tend to create more balanced nationals than broad topics, especially for NCFLs. A broad topic is a great thing to have when you're going to eight tournaments on it in September and October, but this is a topic for a single tournament. So when you have a very broad topic, very often what that means is both teams come into the rounds, this is their first and only tournament on this topic, with a very different vision of what the topic is. And because arguing framework is discouraged at NCFLs, this means that whichever team has a vision of the topics that better matches the judge's preconception of the topics is likely to win. So narrow topics that clearly outline clash are probably a little bit better there. I've heard people complain that some of the topics that have been offered are too narrow, that they're almost like plans. A, a topic cannot be a plan. A plan is parametricizing a topic down beyond what it already is. Some of the best public forum topics I have seen, either potential or actual ones, are ones that actually mirror what would be a affirmative, a plan, in a policy resolution. Not a whole policy resolution, but what some of these stock cases would be. More so some of the big stick AFs than the splinter AFs, so to speak, but still definitely something that you could see an individual team running each of their affirmative rounds each year. Those are often the right mix of broad and narrow to make a good NCFL Nationals public forum topic. That said, it's not just a question of broad versus narrow, it's a question of reciprocally broad versus specifically broad. And this is a problem that banned topics in particular run into a lot. They give the middle ground away to just one side, and the other side has one exact position they have to argue. 2010 was probably the worst example of this, which is why I think Pro won one Elam round of that tournament. It was an incredibly broad topic if you happened to be con. It just wasn't if you were pro. And the issue is, beyond that, a con bias is much more harmful at NCFL Nationals than a pro bias, and side bias is a slightly bigger deal in general. And there's two reasons for this. The first reason is just that because con always speaks second, con is in a generally stronger position. It also means that pro can never capitalize on having a broad topic the same way that con can, because con can always hear what pro is saying and perfectly predict before choosing how they want to interpret the topic. Multiple pro cases at NCFL Nationals don't do you nearly as much good as multiple con cases. But beyond that, it's hard to write balanced public forum topics especially when you have to churn one out every single month. It can get difficult. But at the same time, there's checks built into the activity. Namely, that whichever team ends up picking speaking order, the other team gets to have whichever side of the topic they personally believe is stronger. And that checks things back 
fairly well on a lot of topics that are otherwise not the best balanced topics out there. NCFLs does not have that check. You're always going to have a con team that gets the last word. You are always going to have a con team that gets functionally more prep time than the pro team. There aren't the usual things that balance this out in the other events, like a block of back-to-back -back speeches in the middle, a guarantee that the team that speaks first also gets the last speech, or disparate burdens where one side has a burden of proof and the other side only has a burden of refutation. None of these things actually apply, but the structure that those things balance does apply. And that makes things difficult because you want a topic that is slightly stronger for the pro than for the con, simply because con does have that structural advantage. You don't want it to be too much stronger, obviously, but at the same time, if you have to err in one direction when wording a topic, it is probably best to err towards the pro. Same with flexibility. Pro being able to talk about a wide variety of things in the topic, not such a big deal. Con will always hear them before they give their first speech. Con being able to talk about a wide variety of things, that can be a disaster for pro, especially if pro only has one way to win the round. And again, obviously, speaking first complicates this, but let's take a look at some of the previous topics and see where we got to this. So for instance, 2010 and 2014 were the worst in recent memory. 2010 was resolved that the constitutional right of freedom of religion has wrongly evolved into freedom from religion. Now, this topic very much tells a story, it has a narrative, it has a lot of things that Pro has to prove, a lot of boxes that Pro has to check. Pro, in their first four-minute speech, needs to prove that there is a constitutional right, that it has evolved, that the evolution was wrongful, and that what it has evolved into is freedom from religion. Khan, after hearing Pro's entire case, gets to disprove any one of those to win. Maybe this is why people did not want to be pro at Elims on that topic. Next topic. Resolved. In a democracy, rights created by legislation are preferable to rights created by the judiciary. This was the 2011 topic. It was not as bad as a 2010 topic. It would probably have been an alright topic under normal NSDA rules, where you have the flip in speaking order to compensate for whoever has what they perceive to be the stronger side. Not so much here. The issue is one side has to prove preferability. The other side, after they hear that, can decide, do we want to argue the other way, or do we want to argue that rights are not created by these entities? And pro, always going first, has to have a case that defends against both. Khan gets to argue either. Again, this is fine where AF gets the 2AR, where AF gets the last and first speech of the round. This is not so fine where they alternate one for one because of what that does to prep time and what that does to each team's respective ability to go line by line. Moving forward another year, we're up to 2012. Resolved. Increasing U.S. energy production should take precedence over protecting the environment. I think this was the best recent NCFL national topic in the past six years. This one, it's still a prioritized topic. That's fine. Overall, it's got ways that both sides can frame it. It's not a clear... This is a conflict that one side has three ways to resolve, but the other side has one. It's a topic that speaking first on is not a huge disadvantage, because either way, you could start weighing fairly early. And you didn't see a huge disparity like you did on the others. I think this might have actually been a topic that a pro team won on, as opposed to the rest of these. Okay. Next one up to 2013. Resolved, the main goal of U.S. public education should be to eliminate racial and economic achievement gaps. Many of the same problems as the 2010 one. It's a topic that is very broad for Khan and narrow for pro. Khan can argue that we don't have a main goal, that anything else should be the main goal, that we shouldn't have a main goal that is unachievable, 
that the main goal should be to reduce but not to eliminate. Pro, they've got one story they can tell, and they're going to be telling it a lot, and it's going to be predictable, and they're going to get some experience on it, but that's not enough. Topics like that are also uniquely bad at NCFLs because they rely on really, really suspect evidence for one side. Yes, there is literature balancing in that there is a lit base on both sides, but one side has credible literature, one side not so much. At a tournament where neither your opponents nor your judges are allowed to look at your evidence, topics that incentivize using the craziest hacks you can find get worse, not better. All right, this takes us to 2014. Resolved, minimum wage laws benefit the U.S. economy. And this topic was a cluster failure of a topic in a lot of ways. Elon Browns came down to coin flips. They just did. If you were con, you won. If you were pro, you lost. Go back and look at the results packet. There are some amazing teams who got eliminated the first time they got a pro round. There are some surprising teams who got a lot farther than people might expect until you realize that they were con when they debated against those pro teams. We're talking around 87, 88% win rate. Not pretty. It's probably not as imbalanced a topic as the January, was it 2011, I think? The January cost of a college education outweigh the benefits topic, but the disparity was worse. And again, that's because of the absence of a flip as a checking mechanism in an event where you don't have a team that goes first and last, but you have one team that goes first and another team that goes last. And then, obviously, the topic itself, minimum wage laws benefit the U.S. economy. Pretty narrow for pro. Kind of broad for con. Pro can't argue most of the reasons for minimum wage laws. There are debates about them. Whether or not they directly benefit the U.S. economy versus individual people in it versus benefiting a certain sector of the economy versus benefiting U.S. workers is certainly up for grabs. But actual empirical economic data, unless you're willing to exploit the NCFL rules on evidence and use that to fabricate evidence, you're going to have a hard time coming up with the kinds of studies that a con team wouldn't have an easy time refuting with, well, yes, but if the market chose to pay this wage, we could do that anyway. As a result, everybody wanted to be con, winning coin flips won you Elam rounds. You also saw this in the prelims as well, and frankly, a 4-1 team is probably more telling about a topic than the very first Elam round because of how breaks are calculated there and because it's entirely possible to clear without hitting good teams in the process. But if you are in a round where you are 4-0, and oh, if you are debating another good team so far in the prelims, you are probably hitting similar levels of opposition. And if you look at the 4-1 rounds there, a lot of teams that went 4-1 and one, Three quarters of them had their only loss as pro. Many of those losses weren't to 5-0 teams. They were to teams that didn't clear at all. On the other hand, only a quarter of 4-1 teams had their losses as con, and many of those were either losses to good teams or they were buys. Well, forfeits in their case, buys in the other team's case. The results packet on that is kind of telling. I'll post an abbreviated part of the last page in the description right below the like button. And that takes us to last year's topic. Resolve, corporate influence in education is detrimental to society. Super broad topic, slightly more balanced than the others because it was reciprocally broad, and that helps things a lot for the pro team. The ability for both teams to be broad, the ability for pro to adapt after they hear the con case as well as their own rebuttal, makes a big difference. 
But overall, these are just some of the things that I think you should look at when you are deciding what would make a good or bad topic for a tournament, where Khan always speaks second, where there isn't a flip as a checking mechanism for whichever team believes they have the stronger side, where there is only a single tournament on the topic, where judges will not have heard any rounds on the particular topic before, where framework debates are discouraged, and where neither your judges nor your opponents get to read your evidence. Just some things to keep in mind for future years. We will talk about how to survive this lovely topic where one side's ground is ban it completely and the other side's ground is everything else sometime later this week. Good luck and stay tuned.